Hello and welcome to part 2 of our Asian Fusion Journal, which is a fun accordion junk journal. We are continuing to work on our pages. This is a digital collage club design team project. Just as a reminder, we are using Tina's beautiful Asian, or actually Japanese, images. And on this page, I had some cardstock that I painted with my beautiful gold paint. I used a die cut on these squares and I glued on two of the square images of the collage club. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And because I wanted to add some writing space to that page, I decided to glue some of the beautiful thin paper that I had in my stash from the Sora Aksan Studio Bento box. And so I glued it on one side and now I'm just seeing that it doesn't really open well because my edge of the gold paper was too wide so I had to cut that down. So then it opened a lot better. And I'm doing the same thing for the second one. Just gluing one half down on the card side and then cutting away that edge where it folds. And now I'm adhering them both to the page, making sure they're stuck down well. And that way you have two cute little hidden writing spots. And this was something I continued doing throughout the journal. I really like these hidden writing spots. So throughout the journal there's things you can flip out and take out and, and it's just so fun. So then I took another one of these beautiful stationary pieces and I like this image a lot with this lady. So I cut a piece that was a little longer than the image but the same width and I'm going to fold down a little flap and then I'm going to put glue on that flap and I'm going to glue that onto the image so that it flips up to have a writing space underneath. And then I found a tiny scrap of lace and I thought actually that would be really cute on top of this little miniature notepad. So I'm just cutting off the excess. Really love how that turned out. I think the lace really added a lot to that. So here I'm also just putting glue on the top and gluing that right onto the page. And this way you can flip up both this one and the one underneath to still see the beautiful writing on that book page. On this page I wanted to add this gorgeous image and look this is the Japanese version of a junk journal the one that she's holding. <laughs> Hers is just rolled up and ours is folded. You know each country has their own thing. <laughs> so here I'm taking my beautiful wooden box with scraps. This is actually the box from the Sora Aksan bento box that I got and here I'm adding some more scraps on top of that. I really liked adding the one with the sewing there because I had some sewing on other parts in my journal so that way that, that's a theme that's going through my journal as well. Then I added a piece of wallpaper underneath that fit really well with the colors as well. So I thought that looked really cute on top of that image. And then I again wanted to add a paper underneath for journaling. And I found this Japanese calendar page which was also in the Sora Aksan Bento box. And I'm again going to just glue it down on the flap so that it flips up completely. It's such an easy way to add a hidden journaling spot. And then I'm going to glue that onto those two scraps. And finally then I'm going to glue that whole thing down. Oh, but first, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first I had this 
piece which I also used a die on and I used a tiny brad to, uh, to attach that to the scraps on top and then I adhered it down to my page. I'll show you a close-up of that in a moment and again used my gold painted cardstock that I had. And you just have to flip that aside and then you can flip up the pages. On this page I first wanted to add this beautiful image. Again all the links below for the Digital Collage Club and these kits. And I had this paper that I found at the Goodwill quite a while ago and I decided <laughs> to make a little accordion fold out in our accordion journal. <laughs> so I just cut this paper the same height as the image and now I'm just folding it back and forth to form this harmonica. The last piece wasn't quite the same length but that was okay. Now I'm just trim trimming the top and the bottom because of course I'm not able to glue straight. <laughs> so then I'm putting glue on the whole back side, the one that was a little shorter. And that's it, that's our little fold out. And I did want to add a little tab to make it more obvious that you can pull on it. So I have this tab punch and I'm punching a piece of a master board. And I thought the colors worked really well with what, what else I have going on on the page. So I just glued that on and now you can just pull it out like that and I think that is super fun. I've done that in another journal as well. I think maybe it was a butterfly folio if I remember correctly. Then there was this cute image and I wanted to add that to this piece of fabric. So I took my pinking shears and tried to cut a more or less <laughs> straight line. And now I'm taking my embroidery thread box and I'm choosing a golden thread that I think works really well with the gold that we have going on on the page. And I wanted to hand sew those two together so I just made a knot on the end and I'm stitching with a straight stitch back and forth along the top and making a double knot at the end to secure the thread. Just cutting that off and I think you know the hand sewing is such a special touch in a journal. It's even more special than any machine, machine sewing. <laughs> then I had another piece of that beautiful stationery and I glued that on the back and I had cut that one a little smaller than the fabric and I'm again just gluing it on the top with my fabric glue because I'm gluing it to the wallpaper. So on one side we have this pull out and on the other side we have the flip up and both have some secret journaling space. On this page I wanted to add one of the beautiful dark images. I think this is the only dark one and I wanted to use this tab, uh, tag <laughs> die on it. So that way it had a little bit less of the black but it's still a very very dominant piece but I thought that went really well with the leaves on the other side. Then I used that same die to cut four more pieces of that same page that I still had had some left of from that pull out thingy and all I did was glue all of the tops together just on the very top so that I could still flip them up. And I think there were four in total. Finally, I'm going to glue the bird on the top and this way we have a super cute little booklet. I'm just going through the hole again, making sure that that's open and I'm going to attach another beautiful Avril yarn. This is a very, very fuzzy one. <laughs> and I'm just making a little bow with that. There we go. I think that's super cute. And then we have the papers underneath for lots of journaling space. Okay, it's not lots, but there's some. And finally, I'm gluing that onto my page. 
I like that the pages are not overloaded with things, but they all have something interesting to not only to look at, but also to touch because most of the pages have some sort of texture on them. So here I'm just showing you this one side of the journal. I just think it's so fun. The concept of an accordion journal is so super fun. If you've never tried one, please, please do. It's so easy because there's no sewing. Once you get the hang of how to glue the pages together, again, I will link Meg's video below. So now that everything was decorated, I wanted to make the front and back cover. And I found this very old booklet thingy, something I also had gotten, I think, at either Goodwill or the flea market. And I had a really tough time cutting these two panels apart and making them the right size. But finally I did. And my plan was to attach one in the front and one in the back, leaving, of course, all the sides open. And so th this is the one side, which was very easy because I still had that flap left over. This side, on the other hand, had nothing. So I was going to figure have to figure out how to do that. So I decided to start off by covering both of these panels on the outsides with this beautiful wallpaper in which we also have already one of our pages inside. So now picking it up, I could see through it because of the light where I need to place my panel and I traced it. And I did the same with the second one and then I just cut both of these pieces out. So that way I have my front and my back pieces. And I'm going to attach those with my fabric glue. Make sure they're, ad they're adhered all the way to the ends, all the way to the edges. And now I'm just adjusting the size. So that's the one. And that was, as I said, that was easy to attach. I just put glue on that flap that I had left over. Try to position it so that it, it lines up with the rest of the pages. burnishing it to make sure that it's adhered well. And then I put another piece of one of the other wall papers on top of that to hide that flap. So that worked really well. I couldn't stop taking this journal apart and putting it back together. It was just so cute. Now for the front, I needed a different solution, obviously. So that was going to be the front. I think. <laughs> so I cut out a strip from one of these book pages and I decided I'm going to sacrifice that page we have there. There wasn't a lot going on anyway. So I glued that strip down on that page. And now I had a flap which I could then glue onto the second panel. Again, making sure that it lines up with all the other creases. This feels so good in your hands when you have it all together like this. It's, it's just so different from any regular bound junk journal that I've ever made. And I can't imagine that this would be my last one. So again, I'm covering it with another piece of that same wallpaper. Aren't those paper lanterns just absolutely gorgeous? I love them so much. So now I had my front and my back. I was super happy. So fun, so fun, and I love how you can just flip it both ways. 
But we are of course not done. There are still lots to do. Meg, in her video, she actually said that she left it without a cover. So she just left the first and last pages to be the front and the back of the journal, which is totally fine. But I just kind of had the feeling I wanted sturdy covers. So now I had to fix that, fix that page that I had covered up with my strip of book page. So I again painted these two golden stripes that were there before. It was a really easy fix. And then I just put an image over that that was bigger than the previous one. And that's it. Page is fixed. Super simple. And finally, I wanted to add some ephemera to some of the pockets and tuck spots that we have. So first I wanted to take this little cutie and this wallpaper as a background and use this Tim Holtz tag die to cut out that wallpaper. But of course that was very flimsy. And so I wanted to back it with some other cord <laughs> cardstock. So I just glued those on top of each other. Then I glued the image on top of that. And then that die also comes with this hole reinforcer. And so I cut out a piece from this scrap that I had left and that matched the colors in the image really well and gave a little accent on top. And then I decided to add three of the flowers that I had, you know, I had some painted gold scrap some wait some some scrap that I painted with gold and I used these die cuts on from the last video and I just added those in a triangle <laughs> that way they are really nice and balanced and I really thought that was a cute tag and on the back side I again wanted to add some writing space so I again just glue the top Again, use this very thin Japanese paper, which enables you to look through and still see the design underneath. And that's going to go in that top loading tuck spot. Super cute. <laughs> now on this one here, you remember we have these two secret tuck spots. And I wanted to add another one of those beautiful square images. And I thought the best way would be to add another one of those squares where I used my die cut on. And do the same thing and this one is, is blank on the back side so that's the writing space and I'll just slip that into that uh, pocket that we had left and that card I didn't show it now but maybe you remember from the first episode that flips open as well for more writing space now the one on the page on the left has a deep pocket which I wanted to fill with another one of these tags. So I again cut out this Tim Holtz tag shape twice. And again, I'm going to add an image to that. And I had this left over from the first episode. So I just punched a hole in it to be my hole reinforcer on top there. I thought the blue went quite well with the, there's a little bit of blue in that image. And then I glued that image down and I really like how the black of her dress complements the black hair of the lady on the opposite side. And I again wanted to balance that blue out by adding two more of those blue flowers that I had left over from the first episode. And this just kind of balances the whole thing out. And I'm adding another one of the beautiful Avril yarns. Again, I will link the Avril Yarn shop below that I used from Etsy. It's been a really long time. I've had these for a long time, but, um, but I checked them. They still have all that beautiful Avril Yarn. So I just tied a bow and I just love how it just hangs there. It's so delicate. And on the back again, I wanted to add some more writing space. So I do the same thing. I still have some of this beautiful white Japanese paper. Look how beautifully you can see through to design underneath. I think it's gorgeous. And that goes into 
at the goldfish pocket. <laughs> Looking if there's any other pages that need any other ephemera. So these were all done. This one was done. This one is done. And then flipping the other way. Here we have that writing space and that one. You can never have enough flips, right? <laughs> Here we have some collage. Ah, here we both need a something, a something for this card. So this is the one I thought was so cute. So when we take it out, we see the full goldfish and we put something back in. We only see half the goldfish. I think it's so cute. And then of course we have this pocket on the right and I have another one of these tag shapes and I didn't want to use the full height so I decided to cut that tag down a little bit. And I again chose another image to put on top there. And I used a whole reinforcement cut out from a piece of marbled paper that I have from Nick the Booksmith's Etsy shop. And again, I'm going to use the same beautiful Avril yarn to tie a bow on top. That blue just went so well with the blue on the image. Love it. And that goes into the pocket. This one was done. We have our writing space there. And this I think is the last page where we still need to add something. So on the left we have our belly band. So I took some wallpaper, put it through that same die and then put it through this embossing folder. It didn't quite come out as well as I thought it would but that was because that wallpaper was so textured already. And then I wanted to put this beautiful image on there, framing it again with the last piece of my gold card stock that I had. So I wanted to glue that where the indent was from the embossing folder. So that was perfect. That gave me actually the idea to use this shape. Love that blue. It's of course the same wallpaper that I have the, the belly band made out of. So the back is this kind of like peach color and I made a whole reinforcement with similar colors that went really well to the went really well with the gold and that will live in that belly band there and finally we needed something for the right side for this little pocket so I used that same shape put on another one of these beautiful squares so adorable and already had backed that with some more cardstock, has some more writing space in the back and that will go into that little pocket that we had. So finally everything is decorated, all the pockets and tuck spots are filled. This is what it looks like. It is not bulky at all, which is great. I think for this journal, I don't know how it would look if, if it was super bulky, that might be really weird. And now I'm just showing you how it looks when you actually like unfold it in this way, like pulling it apart. It is so fun to see all the pages next to each other. So if you use cohesive design elements, everything of course is going to work together so well. And it doesn't matter how or where you fold it open, it's just going to look beautiful anywhere. So now I'm folding it back up. I could play with this journal all day long, just folding it and unfolding it. <laughs> I never knew this would be so much fun. So Meg, in case you're watching this by any chance, thank you again so much for this inspiration. 
So this is now unfolding it from the other side. <laughs> it's kind of like a never-ending journal, you know. You, you close it from one side and then you just fold it and then you, you turn it around and then you fold it open from the other side. It's, it, it's just amazing. Please try it. It's super fun. So I hope this inspired you to try your own. Check out Tina's Digitals if you enjoyed those. But most of all, just have fun playing with paper. Hope to see you back here soon for another project. Love you guys. <laughs>